how's it all going to transpire? It's called the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is where Paul speaks about the rapture. And here's what he said very quickly. He said, there's going to be a shout. Somebody say shout. shout. And then he said, there's going to be the voice of an archangel. And then he said, there's going to be the trump of God. The last thing that you get to hear is a trumpet. And that trumpet does two things. It calls you to worship because the Bible says that we're going to sit at his feet and cast our crowns there. When we get to heaven, all we're going to do is worship King Jesus. We're going to sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. And it summons an army, the army that is going to return to the earth and establish a kingdom for which there will be no end. Now here's the thing. When you read the syllabus, I don't know when it happens. But what I can tell you based on all of the due dates of all the assignments that have been turned in, the next thing is that thing. We're getting ready to leave this world. For the record, the rapture is not biblical. It's not something that a majority of Christians throughout history have believed. It's not even something that a majority of Christians in the world today believe. It's something that a minority of evangelicals and some Pentecostal Christians have believed since the 1700s and 1800s, really. It's based off of a misinterpretation of 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 17, which says, According to the Lord's word, we will tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, those who are still alive and left will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and we will be with the Lord forever. Now, if you take that passage out of context, it sure sounds like rapture theology, right? A group of Christians who are still alive on the earth will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. But we forget that this passage is part of a broader letter that Paul was writing to the church of Thessalonica. And they were asking questions about what happens to those who die with faith in Christ. And if you know anything about first century Judaism, the common belief was that everybody dies and there will be a day of judgment where all people will be resurrected, good and bad, righteous and unrighteous, to stand before God in judgment. And so what Paul is doing is quoting scripture that references that. A day is coming where all people will be raised up to face the judgment of God. Those of us who are alive will go after those who are already dead, but all people will meet the Lord and face judgment. This isn't a promise that in the end times we'll get raptured off the earth so God can condemn the world to hell. No, this is just a promise of the incoming judgment day that all humans will experience. And it's using, using apocalyptic imagery that's common throughout the Hebrew Bible. For instance, in the book of Daniel, there's a lot of imagery about the Lord coming on the clouds in glory. It's apocalyptic, not literal. It's metaphorical, not literal. This is an image meant to conjure up the glorious day of God's judgment in the world. The same way that we interpret the book of Revelation, and everybody interprets Revelation this way as not literal, but metaphorical and symbolic, is how we are supposed to interpret the imagery that the Apostle Paul is using. Are Christians going to be called into the air to meet the Lord? No, that's just an image of resurrection. It's an image of the powerful standing before the throne of God and facing judgment like all people. This idea that God is going to come and take Christians away so that he can condemn the world to hell is not anything like what Jesus taught. Jesus didn't teach that God was going to come and destroy everyone. No, Jesus taught that God's desire was to redeem the world. The idea that Christians want to escape this world, to not care about it going to hell in a handbasket because they're concerned with just going to heaven and watching it burn, that's so unbiblical and it's so unchristlike. How could a Christian have joy while the majority of the world gets burnt to hell? That is fundamentally unbiblical. And it's based on a fundamental misinterpretation and a taking out of context of what the Apostle Paul is writing in 1 Thessalonians and the context of first century Judaism and the context of biblical apocalyptic writings. So if you're afraid of the rapture, don't be. It's not going to happen. It's not a biblical doctrine. Christians have never believed it, and we shouldn't either.